Pat Day is one, not only one of the most popular jockeys in our sport, he is without a doubt one of the most successful, and he joins us now on the phone uh, to talk about what he's up to these days. Mr. Day, thanks for taking time to be with us here on TVG. Well, it's a pleasure to be on with you and Christina, and I appreciate you giving us this time. Thank you. Uh, Pat, last Kentucky Derby, uh, it, you know, you've had so many great honors in your career, but I could, I could tell uh, you were really moved when Churchill renamed one of their longest races the Pat Day Mile. Uh, what was that honor like for you? Oh, uh, Todd, it's just uh, indescribable. You know, it... Um uh, when, when I, obviously the highlight of my racing career, you just uh, replayed that, the Derby in 92, uh, of all the victories, you know, the, the wonderfully, incredibly successful racing career, that was the, that was the victory that stands out. And, of course, we'd had a, a tremendous amount of success there at Churchill Downs. When I retired, they, they erected a statue in the, in the garden, which I was blown away by that. Um, and, and then last year, uh, to, rename the Derby trial, which had always been run on the Saturday before the Derby. Uh, they, they moved that to Derby Day and renamed it the Pat Day Mile. I just, um, uh, what, what do you say in light of that? You know, I'm just uh, I'm tremendously touched and honored and, and blown away by it. Pat, so you were obviously on hand to watch American Pharaoh in the Kentucky Derby. And we have a great event to talk to you about, but I want to get your thoughts on the Triple Crown winner that we saw from this past year. Well, I, I had the distinct privilege and pleasure of watching him obviously win the Derby, and, and uh, <clears throat> but I had the joy of going back by the barn, and he, he is just one special individual. Uh, I've not been around, I've been around a ton of horses, as you can imagine, but I've never been around one that had his disposition. Uh, what, a, what a kind, uh, and a running machine, but a wonderful disposition, a, a great horse, and, and I couldn't be more, more grateful to the, to the connections. Uh, they they were just so generous with their time and, and making him available and and uh, you know bringing him out letting people see him and pet him and it was uh, it was tremendous uh, great for the game uh, couldn't be happier for them. Pat, there have been many in sports. There's been many in horse racing who have put together dizzy numbers and great accomplishments. But what has separated you uh, from those who have climbed the statistical charts is that you've been more focused on the kind of man that you are. So you have this combination of great accomplishments, but you've also made it clear you want to be known as a man who did so much for the sport, even when you were out of the saddle. Just talk about a little bit about your philosophy and how it's carried on after you've been done writing. Well, Todd, you know, I, I, I'll be the first to tell you, I was tremendously blessed, and I believe my steps were divinely directed uh, from the mountains of Colorado, where there was no horse racing, uh, by way of the ro uh, rodeo arena and ultimately onto the racetrack, where that talent and ability had an opportunity to come forth. And, and um, uh, you know, it was tremendously successful early on. Uh, just indicative of the talent and ability that I had. And for the first 10 years, I took full credit for all that. And I was living in a room full of mirrors. I tell people I was, all I could see was myself, and I tried to satisfy myself. I took full credit for all the, all of the victories. And and um, and then I came to Christ in January of 1984. And and uh, it just made a monumental difference in my life. I realized that God had blessed me with talent and ability and opportunities and. I was to take that and do the best that I could, but all the while endeavoring to live a life that would be first and foremost pleasing in the eyes of my Lord um, and, and sharing that victory with those around me. And uh, it, just, it just changed my whole focus and obviously changed the tra trajectory of my, of my career. Well, a very good example of, of what you're talking about is your involvement now with the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. Uh, there's an event coming up February 28th uh, at Gulfstream Park, Jockeys and Jeans. But tell us about the importance that all of us need to get involved with the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. Well, uh, the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund helps uh, those riders that have uh, experienced catastrophic injuries and are no longer able to, to ply their trade. And, uh, at the present time, there are 60 of those eligible recipients, 60 riders that have fallen and are in need of, of assistance. And the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund takes up the slack in that area. Uh, you know, it, we're, we're in, uh, this is our 10th year, the 10th year anniversary of the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. Over the 10 years, we've been able to assist 72 uh, jockeys that have uh, endured catastrophic injuries. We've dispersed over 7 million to eligible recipients. 
uh, the program has it's been it, – it's just um, – uh, it, we're, we're trying to raise – the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund helps the riders that have fallen and, and are in need of assistance. And this Jockeys and Jeans event is uh, to help raise awareness of and funds for this very worthy cause. The folks putting together the Jockeys and Jeans events, they're fairly new to these events, and they raised a lot of money in their second ever event that they had, over $200,000, and they're hoping to top that. I know this Sunday at Gulfstream and the folks at Lane's End have been very generous in donating some stallion seasons to the event as well. But, Pat, from what I understand, if anybody at home is watching, anybody within the game, they can get involved already. They can go online now if they'd like to start bidding on these stallion seasons, correct? Yes, ma'am. They went online today. Uh, you can go online and, and uh, bid on breeding seasons, and they've got a who's who of uh, breeding seasons available. Uh, yeah, the, the event, uh, Christina, is Sunday afternoon, February 28th. Doors open at 12 o'clock. It'll be held at the Sport of Kings Theater at Gulfstream Park. And uh, obviously the purpose of Jockeys and Jeans is to raise awareness of the challenges faced each day by those who have suffered catastrophic on-track injuries. Uh, there's going to be myself and a, and a who's who of jockeys, Hall of Fame jockeys, uh, myself, Lafitte Pinkai, Manny Yakaza, Johnny Rots, Don Pierce, Walter Blum, Angel Cordero, Edgar Crado, Jose Santos, Bobby Ussery, Bill Boland, Georgie Velasquez, Jacinto Vasquez, and Sandy Holly will all be there uh, signing autographs and uh, a meet and greet with the fans that would care to come. Uh, the, the general mission is $50. Uh, 25 for jockeys and former uh, former jockeys. Uh, Pat, I, you know, just to kind of put it in perspective and to bring it back to what the PDGF does. When I was uh, down at uh, Gulfstream Park, uh, I had a chance to see Michael Strait, and you want to talk about an inspiration, and no one will forget the video of him uh, using mechanical legs to get to the winner's circle and inspire everyone to bring awareness. So I just want to go back to that point that you talked about, the number of riders that have been helped through this fund with the PDJF, and uh, Michael Strait, to me, was just to see him in person, uh, especially after watching that video, was a real testament to what you're talking about, how we can make a real effect with the dollars earned through these events absolutely absolutely uh, you know and we don't have a, a steady revenue stream uh, we're dependent upon fundraisers such as this uh, and and the generosity of people within and without the industry uh, that that uh, know what we do know the the danger uh, that we're exposed to uh, the subsequent injuries that these riders have experienced and and the help that they need and deserve and we appreciate all the help. Uh, Mr. Day, we appreciate uh, what you have meant to the sport, both in the saddle and outside of the saddle, and thank you for staying connected to the sport that has given you so much and you've given so much back to it. Pat Day, you are a true treasure to Thoroughbred Racing. Thank you. Well, my pleasure to be on with you guys. And, uh, you know, just one last thing. You know, the, the racing game uh, gave so much to me, and I, if I had two lifetimes, spent every day giving back, I could never repay the, the industry for what it's given to me. Well spoken. Pat Day, Hall of Famer, joining us on the line and one of the best ambassadors the sport has ever had and uh, reminding us about the Jockeys and Jeans event coming up February 28th at the Sport of Kings Theater at Gulfstream Park. If you want information, you can go to jockeysandjeans.com or you can call 954-457-6201.